Right, uh, good, good day learners. Um, welcome to this history uh, lesson presentation. Today uh, we're going to deal with the with the essay question that will be uh, question 5 in paper 2. And this question will be on South Africa's road to democracy. Um, yeah, is basically two factors that one has to look at. Firstly, how did the negotiations unfold? How did it take place? Um, and then also, during this negotiation process, how many challenges uh, and what challenges occur on the way to where South Africa had to become a, a democracy? Because there were many factors that made the negotiations very difficult and, and it was not at all an easy road for South Africa to become a, a democracy what, uh, as it is today. Um, the period between 1990 and 1994 was uh, definitely one of South Africa's most, most violent periods with the, with the most deaths um, occurring you know, in political violence and such. Right. Um, firstly, yeah, if, you look on the, if you look on the screen, there is um, something that your, your educators might want to do with you is where you take these different um, events, these happenings on the road to democracy and, and you arrange it in the proper sequence to, 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 to make things easier for you. It's, it's always good to do it chrono, chronolo, uh, chronologically to say, this happened, then this, then this, then this. Um, not always necessary to say the exact dates, um, all of the dates. Um, uh, yes, I believe that here yeah, and there you, you would have to uh, mention some of the exact dates, but um, just to know what happened and, and what followed, to, to put it in the exact way um, as what happened first and, and, and right to the end as to where South Africa had their first democratic uh, election on the 27th of uh, April 1994. So, so the educators can give you this and, and you then put it in the proper sequence. Right. Um, right. Um, South Africa's road to democracy, um, as they say here, uh, had, had many obstacles that which they face. Um, there are some of the examples of the obstacles um, that, that, that um, South Africa had. Um, the first one there, and we, we will go into each one of them. Um, as we go on, the first one was the Sebo King uh, massacre. Uh, actually, there were, there were two uh, ma massacres that took place in, in Sebo King, in the township of Sebo King, and then the Seven Day War in Peter Maritzburg. Um, then we had the Inkato Gate scandal. Some might um, talk of this, I believe, as, as the third force or the or, 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 or the um, black on black violence. Then we have the Boy Patong massacre, um, Bishu massacre. Very important also then the assassination of, of Chris Harney. We will, we will look at that. The World Trade Center invasion by the uh, AWB, the Afrikaner, Weers, the Afrikaner Weerstand Beweging. Then we have the St. James's Church attack in Cape Town that we will look at. The Heidelberg Tavern attack. And then also the Shell House massacre, um, which was one of the last obstacles, as you can see, just before... Um, South Africa went um, to the voting stations and where South Africans started voting. And this took place on the 28th of March. Um, and uh, yeah, this was about a month later than South Africa had their first democratic um, election. Right, let's go to um, some, of, some of the things that you will, that you will look, uh, have to look at. Well, there you have the rolling mass action, which the ANC uh, participated in. Uh, Mandela encouraged this. Um, um, where, 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 where he encouraged the, 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 the supporters of the ANC to show up in large numbers um, yeah, and protest and what. And then we had the Pretoria meeting. Um, okay, this is still part of the, the, the things that you will have to arrange in proper sequence. We had Kudesa, Convention for Democratic South Africa. Uh, we had the first democratic elections, the record of understanding where Ruth Meyer and Sal Ramaphosa played such a, such a big role. We had a multi-party negotiation forum. Um, just remember now, this is not in uh, proper sequence. Grote Skier meeting, 
the declaration of intent, we had Kudesa 1, we had the whites only referendum. You can just look at that for a moment, maybe your educator will stop there, and then you can arrange then all of this into the right sequence, right, as they happen. Um, right, which leaders played, played an important role in South Africa's process of, of, of becoming a democracy? Well, obviously, uh, the two key figures here was Nelson Mandela and uh, Eve de Klerk. Eve de Klerk, Frederick Willem de Klerk, he took the decision to release Nelson Mandela um, in 1990, um, when Mandela was then released on the 11th of February 1990, which was, which was not, I believe, a decision that was taken, taken easily, but the, the time had come for Mandela to, to be released. As uh, all of you know, he spent 27 years in prison, a uh, much too long time that he, that he spent in prison. And, and uh, um, I think, or I believe, everyone knew that if you want, um, if they wanted the, the, the negotiations to, to, to go according to plan, that they, they understood the key role that, that Mandela would play. Um, he, he, as a, he, he, was just, he was just so important. I mean, the government could not let something happen to him. Had he died in prison, still um, they would have, uh, the world would have said that they have murdered him. And, and, and I just don't believe there wasn't, uh, uh, according, to, my, according to, to me, I wouldn't say there was a different leader that could have played the role um, that Nelson Mandela played too. Um, so many people that, that, that uh, looked up to him and was right. Then we also have Rolf Meyer and Silva Ramaphosa. Well, um, at times Nelson Mandela and Evie de Klerk did not always see eye to eye. Um, there were times that they, they really bumped heads. They, they, they found it difficult to, to come along at times. And I believe here is where Rolf Meyer and Silva Ramaphosa came in and, and uh, they, they became known as the Channel. Um, they became uh, friends and, and, and they, they really made the negotiations, I believe, go uh, much quicker, much smoother and such, uh, where, where Mandela and the clerk always couldn't maybe, they were younger, um, yeah, and they, they obviously came up with the record of understanding. Right, then we have Joe Slovo. Well, Joe Slovo, the leader of the, well, who was once the leader of the South African Communist Party, the SACP, um, he was also a key figure in the negotiations because of the sunset clause that he brought in. We will discuss that. Chris Arney, uh, very important. Um, I have heard where, 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 where um, people have said that he, he was maybe after Mandela the most popular um, black leader in the country, even though he was, he was so young. Um, if I can just go back to Joe Slover again quickly, something that just came to mind is that the clerk didn't want to um, negotiate with Joe Slovo. He told Mandela so, and this is, this is according to Slovo's daughter. And uh, Mandela said to the clerk, you choose your negotiators or you choose your team and I choose mine. Um, and, and, and strangely enough, the clerk who then didn't want to negotiate with, with Slovo, um, at the end of the day, it was actually Slovo that 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 see to it that the white um, old white government kept their jobs and 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 and, and their benefits and so um, when he came up with the sunset uh, clause, right? Andriy uh, Trichnitsch, he was the leader of the opposition party then, um, obviously very much against the negotiations, um, was not happy with it. Um, Eugene Terblanche, the leader of the Afrikaner Weerstandsbeweging. Also, again, very much against um, the negotiations that took place. He tried to disrupt it. Um, he tried to, or they, the AWB and his leadership, they tried to disrupt negotiations. They also tried um, um, to, have, to, to get an independent Afrikaner homeland or something uh, as such. Um, and, and, but that was never given to them. Goodwill Suletini, okay, the leader. Uh, of, 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 of the Zulus, um, and then Mangasutu Butelezi, obviously the leader of the IFP, the Inkata Freedom Party. Yes, he, he, he made negotiations at times very difficult, um, um, where he refused to participate um, 
he refused to um, let the IFP then also actually join in the elections uh, just at the last minute, basically, almost a uh, week or what before elections took place. They had to put on the IFP logo and so to say, but no, they are going to participate because he, he didn't want them to participate. And uh, then they won. Um, the only province that wasn't won by the ANC in 1994 was the uh, was Natal, uh, KwaZulu Natal. Sorry, where Mangasudu Butelezi. Then the IFP got, uh, I think, uh, if I'm correct, was 50% of the votes. Uh, so that that province was then governed uh, by the IFP in 1990. After 1994, the only province not governed by the ANC. Then Lucas Mangop and Opa. Uh, excuse my pr pronunciation, Opa Khoza, they were the two leaders of, of two of these homelands uh, that they have, um, Bobo Putatswana and Transkai. They also didn't at times, obviously, they didn't want these homelands to participate in the negotiations um, because they actually preferred, obviously, being independent because now they were the leaders of their own countries. Um, but if if they if they if they become part of of actually of South Africa again, um, what role will they then play? They cannot be then the leaders of their own countries, right? Let Lapa Mpalelele, sorry guys, he was the leader of the. No, he was the guy who who, who was responsible. If I remember correctly, for St James's um, church attack, right? And then if I can go on, yeah, Clive Derby Lewis, very important. Um, he was the person who, who gave um, the next person there, Johannes Wallisch, the gun, which then actually killed uh, Chris Hani. We will, we will look into that. Constant Fulyun, who, who became the leader of the Freedom Front, also only at the later stage decided to join the elections, um, to participate in the elections. And then we had the, uh, have there the last one, Judge Richard uh, Colstone, who, um, who was... The, the, at the head of the Colstone Commission, and this commission looked into the, this third force um, where the black on black violence were taking place. Colstone then had to look, but um, was the government also actually behind it? Were they funding the IFP? Were they giving them military weapons? Um, right, he, he had to look at, at, at that, but we will discuss it now, right? Um, just uh, quickly here, if you can look at when you mention these obstacles, you can, you can, you can say who, who were the ones protesting, for example, who were the ones who were shooting or who was being shot, right? Then what? What were they protesting against? Or, or um, again, in the, the third one, when? When did this take place? Like I say, Try to mention some of the dates. At, at, at least there, there are some dates I believe that you should definitely mention. Why? Why were they protesting and how? How, how did the event unfold? Um, how many were shot? When did they start shooting? Uh, Etc. Right. Let's go to the to the first um, challenge that we had in the <coughs> sorry in the negotiation uh, process. Right, was the black on black violence. Um, now, this was the, between the IFP and the ANC, or I can even maybe say the Zulus and the Kozas, where, where, where the blacks in the township was, was um, the black people were killing each other in the townships. Um, there, if you can just read with me, the television screens of Africa were littered with scenes like this. The media termed this black on black violence. For strange enough, even maybe from the late 80s, this, this started happening. And where for the first time we saw black people, um, well, not a first time, but, but in, on such a huge scale, where blacks were killing each other. Um, it's not, not the government or the police, but it's them killing each other. And, yeah, and, and here we had the, the, the way where they, where they mentioned the third force, um, where they say the government, and I, I've mentioned it, but the government was funding this, giving the IFP 250,000 rand and um, giving them weapons and training and, and what have you um, to, 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 to encourage this violence. Um, maybe to say then, um, if these blacks are killing each other, 
what will they do to the whites? Um, um, and, and, and yeah, it didn't, it didn't look good. It did not look good, right? Many deaths, thousands of, of, of deaths occurred um, through this, this, this. IFP and um, ANC, um, black on black violence then. If I can go on, um, yeah, right. They say the country was under the clutches of violence for a long time and the re resolution seemed unthinkable amid this violence. If you can look at those uh, pictures there, um, just how horrible this was. Um, look at that guy uh, set alight. Um, and, and, and yeah, they, they killed each other with traditional weapons, you know, pangas, etc. Um, I, I think that this had to be very scary. Uh, in the sense, you walk, um, a bunch of these IFP uh, guys, um, supporters, they, they come to you, these weapons, try to run away, catch, if they catch you, then they uh, would murder you. Right, there's, uh, there's more of the pictures there. Um, you can just look at it, you know, the, the still part of the black-on-black -black violence. And then, guys, um, now, now here you have to say where, you also have, obviously have to say where did the violence take place. You can't just say only that there was a lot of violence, a lot of black on black violence. You have to say, but where? Where did it happen? Right, now the first one there was at, uh, was at Sebo King, massacre on the 22nd of July. Remember I said there was two uh, massacres at Sebo King. The second one was on the 12th of January, 1991. Now the first one on the 22nd of July, 1990, uh, more than 22 people were killed when protesters were shot at by the police. The second one, more than 30 people were killed as the IFP raided Sebo King and killed um, people, right? So that, that was uh, the, the black on black violence. Then um, the Seven Day War in Peter Maritzburg, March 1991. Hundreds of people killed in Edenville, in KwaZulu Natal, in the conflict between the IFP, the Encarta Freedom Party and the UDF. United Democratic Front, hundreds of people were killed and dwellings burned down to ashes and the police stood by and did nothing. Now, this is where Mandela and um, the clerk actually clashed because Man Mandela was accusing him not only of funding this violence but also saying to him, why are you not st stopping this violence? Why don't you use the police or the army or, or, and, just, and just stop the violence? And then they really... Uh, they really bumped heads here, right, um, uh, about this, right. And then, the Inkata Gate scandal, July 1991. The details of secret funding and militarization. Now, I said to you about the 250,000 rand that, uh, that was given to the IFP by the government and then the militarization as well, where they used the military to... No, 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 the, 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 they gave these IFP guys military training right of the IFP by the government emerged right so it became known secret training locations for the IFP were discovered and the uh, South African Defense Force was found to be behind this project headed by Philip Powell on the side of the IFP um, Frederick, uh, Frederick Willem de Klerk, Evie de Klerk sorry he on to this day um, refuses or, 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 or he denies anything about this. He say he had no knowledge whatsoever about, about this funding uh, that took place. He said if it happened, uh, it, was, it, was, it, was, um, it was ordered by someone else. And yeah, yeah. what? He, he, even with the TRC, he refused to, 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 to take any role or to admit to any role in this. Um, Question is, um, if he did not know about this, how can you be the head of a government and you don't know what's, what's going on inside your own um, government or in your own um, army or, or your, 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 your police force or what? Right. Um, right. Then we go to, the, to, to one of the massacres again, the Boy Patong massacre. On the 17th of June, 1992. Now, this was one of the, of the worst, obviously, because 46 people were killed. When IFC supporters from Kwama uh, Dala Hostel are alleged to have launched an attack on residents in an ANC-supported area during the night 
Wiggle. Right, so this was this was part of the black on black violence, Boy Patong. Um, and, and and at this stage in the 1990s, this becomes a thing that we saw so much um, on the news where, where they where there's a massacre and people are, are just huge number of people are killed. In the 60s they had Sharpeville, in the 70s they had the Soweto riots, and, and they, but in the 1990s they had um, a bunch of them, a lot of them. Uh, a thing like Sharpeville Soweto happened in the 1990s, monthly or a weekly basis or what, uh, it was just constantly, right. Bijou Massacre, um, where 28 people were killed on the 7th of September 1990. Now this was one of the activities organized under the ANC Rolling Mass Action. Right. Um, 28 people were killed. Right. And then guys, or let me first go back here. Um, at one of these happenings, so either Boy Patong or Bishu, could I, I, I'm not now sure whether it was Boy Patong or Bishu, but the clerk came to visit uh, or to see the the victims, you know, to, to sympathize with them or whatever, and, and he was chased away. Another one where Mandela shows up and, and he says that they are not, when he, when he looks at, at, at what is happening, he says he are, he, they are not dealing with human beings, right? So, yeah, this, was, this, this played a, a very big role in negotiations. It made negotiations very difficult, right? Then... There was the assassination of Chris Hani on the 10th of April 1993. As I already said, um, very popular leader um, came through the ranks with MK. Um, Chris Hani became the leader of the South African Communist Party, and and um, now this almost disrupted everything that that was done from 1990 up until that uh, 1993 on the 10th of April when Chris Hani was shot. The person behind the killing was uh, Clive Derby Lewis, against negotiations, doesn't want negotiations to continue. So his plan was actually to stop negotiations by killing such a popular leader, right? Um, he gave the gun to Johannes Valle, someone um, not even from South Africa, come to this country because he, I, I believe he, he, he wanted to come away from communism. What does Clive Derby Lewis tell him? This is the leader of the Communist Party. And he then goes and he shoots him at his house in Boxburg. Um, um, as Arnie was, was, was getting out of the driveway, um, he shot him four times, right? But um, Johannes Valles, he was, he was arrested just moments later as, 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 as his, um, Chris Arnie's neighbor um, phoned the police and, and informed them what the registration number was. That's why they, they caught him so quickly. Um, and then, the, and then the, 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 the role of Clive Derby Lewis came out. Clive, let me do it. Clive Derby Lewis, sorry, Johannes Vallis, um, both of them applied for amnesty with the TRC now, um, but none of them were, 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 were given this. Uh, as far as to my knowledge, yes, Chris, uh, uh, Clive Derby Lewis is still in prison today as he was sentenced to, to life imprisonment, right? Um, there you can just read with me, South Africa was placed on the, and this is very important that you bring in this as well, very important, that you talk about the role that Mandela then played, because South Africa was placed on the brink of disaster, black people were furious, and uh, they, uh, then, it was then Mr. Mandela, Nelson Mandela had to go and he had to address, address the nation on national TV and, and appealed for calm, to ask them just to stay calm, that everything that they have done over the last few years is not just simply all for nothing. And, and if you think about it, it's actually the clerk that had to do this, um, as he was still the president of the country, but he couldn't calm them. So this is actually where Mandela really he, he steps up and, and, and takes the takes actually the, the, the role of leadership of this country. Because usually that is a thing reserved to, to, to talk to people on national television, reserved for the president, and yeah, and yeah Nelson Mandela has to go and, and, and talk to the people and, and settle them down, right? Then the World Trade Center invasion by the AWB. 
De Afrikaner weerstandbeweging under the leadership of Eugene Ter Blanche. On the 25th uh, 5th of June 1993, there you can see the armored vehicle smashing into the World Trade Center. Where negotiations was happening, they tried to disrupt negotiations. I believe they were about 20,000 AWB members uh, marching into that uh, World Trade Center, making havoc. Um, but uh, as you can read there, it was, it was unsuccessful. Um, they could not derail the negotiation process. They could not. Um, yes, look at their sign, you know, uh, the emblem that they had and what, where uh, you can see many resemblance with the, with the Nazis also and so, right. But their plan was always just to stop negotiations. These guys didn't want South Africa to change into a democracy, right. We're going to go to the next one. Uh, case of violence, the St. James's Church attack on the 25th of July. 1993, um, one of the attacks engineered by APLA, the attack happened in Kenilworth, Cape Town. Uh, 11 people were killed by a hand grenade hurled into the church, right? Uh, if I can go quickly also just to the Heilberg Tavern Massacre, there were four people killed. Attack on a tavern patrons ordered by Mr. Letlape uh, of the PIC, right? Um, then we also had the Shell House Massacre on the 28th of March, 1994. As I said, just a month before the actual elections took place, 19 IFP supporters were killed and many more people were killed during the march by the IFP to the ANC head offices, which, is, um, which was then called Shell House. Uh, today it's called the Tully House, um, where, where these ANC members... Um, shot at the IFP supporters as they were marching, probably knowing what they were actually coming to do, started shooting at them, right? Sorry, then the invasion of Bobo Putatswana, uh, one of the homelands, on the, in March 1994, again, the Afrikaner Weerstandsbeweging, offered to rescue the government of a fellow Kossach member, Mr. Lucas Mangope, who was under siege in Bobo they killed a number of people on their way to the capital city and then the three of the AWB members were shot and killed by a member of the Popoputatswana Defense Force. Now, they were shot and killed while a, a, a cameraman man, uh, was filming this. And, 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 and this was then shown. Um, they were not armed at the time. They were lying um, on, the, on, the, on the ground. They, they had their hands up. They asked for medical assistance for one of the guys that were shot. But these um, Defense Force members, they uh, executed them basically um, right there. And then as you, uh, uh, you can see the picture there as well. Right. Then... Um, we look now at all the challenges. Now we must look at how it unfolded, not the challenges, but the negotiations. Um, and just go quickly. What events made negotiations possible? Right. I would actually uh, start by the release of Mr. Mandela. Um, guys, you will first write the introduction. Then you will write about Mandela's release. You have to write about Mandela's release. It was, it was a huge, huge happening. So much um, excitement with his release, you know. Uh, the, uh, there's a uh, uh, famous photograph of him walking out of the Victor Fester prison, holding his, the hand of his, of his wife then um, and waving to the people, you know. 11th of February 1990, definitely one of the dates that South Africans has to know. Uh, it, it, was, it was just such a big thing, you know. Um, the clerk went to Mandela and he said he's going to release him. Mandela said to him, this is according to the clerk, that uh, the time was too soon. But the clerk said to him, now you have been in prison too long, you have to be released then. Um, and then he said to him, he's going to fly him to Joburg, where they will have a, a, a ceremony or, or something for him. And, and then Mandela said to him, now, if you release me, 
I don't. I I want to be released right here from. I'm not. I'm just going to drive out and I'm going to get out and I'm going to walk here in Cape Town. Um, as no, uh, you are not going to make like you are now the big heroes because you have released me. Okay, um, saying that you have taken uh, a third of his life where he has in, uh, what he has spent in prison. He doesn't want them to get to look like the heroes, if I can say so. Right after the. Um, Mandela's release, I will go to Grote Skier Minute, where it was the first time that the ANC and the National Party came together um, with their different uh, delegates. You know, the Clerk and Mandela, and then on Mandela's side, Joe Slover, the Clerk's side, Pak Bota, um, and, and others as well on, on both sides. Um, where they, where they met uh, at Grote Skier in Cape Town. The first time that the ANC and the then National Party government met and, 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 and uh, came together, right? Then we had the Pretoria Minute. We will, we, will, we will go into that. And then we had the CUDESA, the Convention of a Democratic South Africa. Now, this is different from Grote Skier and Pretoria. Why? Because here, most of the political parties then joined into the negotiations. Very important. Um, I have marked lots of essays where learners confuse Kudesa with, with Grote Skir, or they confuse Kudesa with Pretoria, right? The two drivers of the negotiations between the ANP and the ANC was Ruth Meyer and Cyril Ramaphosa with the record of understanding. Uh, there you can see them on, 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 your, on, on, my, on your left. You have Ruth Meyer standing next to uh, uh, the clerk, and on your right you have Cyril Ramaphosa who is standing there next to Tabu Mbeki, right? And, and, and then when you end off your essay, I would end it off with the, with the first elections in that took place on the 27th of April 1994. Um, as they said, in an election perceived to have been a miracle by many uh, it, was, it was huge for, for, for so many blacks for the first time in their lives to be able to vote. I mean, just look at that picture on the screen. Look at how many they are that um, standing in a queue just to go and vote. You know, so, so much um, effort went into this and, and, and they were just so excited to, to, uh, to be able to vote for the uh, first time. Um, then if I can just quickly... Um, take you through this. This is the, the, the negotiation process and then events uh, on, your, on, on your left hand side, then on your right you have events that occurred while negotiations were taking place. Now the first one is Mandela's release. We already talked about it. I'm not going to talk about it again. Um, don't just mention Mandela's release. You can also mention that the uh, ANC and other political movements became unbanned. So uh, this is where the ANC um, became a legal political party again. They, they, they could come out of exile. You know, Oliver Tambu came back for the first time, and I don't know how many years that he spent overseas to come back to this country. You know, Mandela and them, Susulu and them uh, were all released, right? So you mentioned Mandela's release. You mentioned the unbanning of the ANC and other political parties, right? Uh, as you can read in brackets, that's opened the way for negotiated settlement, right? What events occurred while these negotiations were taking place? Um, there were ongoing attacks on, on commuter trains on the RAND by Mark uh, gunmen. Um, an estimated 573 deaths occurred, right? Um, let's go to the, to the next one. Uh, I, I, I'm not going to go through all of it. Um, which made the negotiations difficult, as we already went through a lot of them. Grote Skier Minute, we talk about it, ANC and the National Party met for the first time. Yeah, the National Party agreed to release all political prisoners, um, and the release then began in September 1990, where they met in May 1990. Um, uh, the NP revoked separate reservation of uh, um, Amenities Act, then the National Party government detained 40 members of ANC, Mac Maraj, including Mac Maraj, Billy Naire. They accused of plotting to overthrow the government. And then there was the IFP attack on um, the ANC at Sebo King, which we have discussed. The Pretoria Minute, the second meeting between the ANC and the National Party government, took place in, in Pretoria. 
very important that you mention this is where the ANC agreed to suspend the armed struggle. The clerk did not want to negotiate with Mandela while the armed struggle was continuing, but Mandela was very careful of just suspending it, um, not knowing if they could maybe turn their backs on them, you know. And uh, then in March 1990, uh, the clerk, okay, uh, revoked the Land Act, the Group Areas Act, so the last few laws that there were still of apartheid was, was taken away. I'm going to go on. Negotiating towards a new constitution. So this is Kudesa. This happened on the 20th of December 1991. Um, very uh, uh, strange date to, to have a thing like this. As you know, it's only five days before Christmas. But this goes to show, because Christmas and New Year, uh, people must go usually on their holidays and what, and here they were coming together at, at Kudesa. To, to discuss negotiations, right? Um, very important on your right-hand side, I would like you to mention that the PIC and the Conservative Party of Andrei Strichnitsch and the IFP withdraw of Kudesa 1. So they, 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 they walked away, right? Um, why did Kudesa 1 end? The NP strongly criticized the ANC for not disbanding MK and accused them of keeping MK as a private army. Then on 17 March 1992, you can mention the whites-only referendum that took place, uh, where the clerk asked the whites, do they want him to continue with the negotiation process or the reforms that he has started with? They simply had to vote yes or no, and uh, about 69% of them then voted. Yes, they want the president to continue with the negotiation process that he has started with. Then we come to Kudesa, Kudesa 2. Agreement reached that uh, SABC to present a neutral view of negotiation process. Remember, during apartheid, the media was always controlled by, um, by, the, by the government. They failed to agree on a new constitution, making body and interim government. The NP wanted Kudesa replaced by a representative of all political parties. Right. Um, let's go on. Time. Um, purposes. The, um, what do we have on the 17th of June? Most agree that Boy Patong was a turning point after which the negotiation process steps in favor of the ANC. So you can mention, obviously, uh, as I already said, the Boy Patong massacre. And just look there. Um, on your right, the, the second last line, where they talk of the government appointing the Goldstone Commission um, to look, uh, what's the judge, Richard Goldstone, to look into the, the uh, violence and, and, and what role did the government play in this. Um, well, what he found it is that even if the government did play a role, even if there was a third force, the, the role of the ANC and the PIC cannot be over. Look, because even if they, they, are, they are given money to IFP, it was still them that were using the weapons, um, killing each other. Right then, very important, the record of understanding that was signed on the 26th of September 1992. It's now the second one there. Um, between Ruth Meyer and Cyril Ramaphosa. They commit themselves to negotiation process and finding a peaceful way forward. Um, this was rejected again by the IFP, the Inkata Freedom Party. Um, I'm going to go to the next one. You can, you can look at the uh, challenges on your own. October 1992, the National Party government agreed to ban the carrying of traditional weapons uh, in public and to release more political prisoners. Right, you know, the, the pangas and what they were using in the townships, right? They are banned. Right, and then we have the 2nd of April, multi-party negotiation process began at Kempton Park. And uh, yeah, the PIC joined in the negotiation process. Joe Slovo of the South African Communist Party, we have talked a bit about him. He suggested a five-year government of national unity, of power sharing. Now, this was a compromise on the side of the ANC, obviously, because they, they knew they are going to win the most votes, they are going to win the election, but... They, they, were, they were willing to have a government of national unity, right? The date for the first democratic election is then set, and uh, 
Yeah, uh, then you can just, yeah, we already talked about uh, the death of Arnie. Um, in November 99, um, just to go back to the death of Arnie, it was also a year where they said, um, not sure now who, maybe it might have been Ruth Mayer and Sil Ramaphosa, but said we have to, we have to now decide on a, on a date. Because like, I, or like they said, uh, the death of Arnie almost disrupted everything that has been done and the whole negotiation process. And yet they decided on a date. Um, and if you go look at the dates, it was, it was just about a year later after Arnie was killed that we then had our first democratic election. Right. Um, if I can just quickly go with you to the... To one of the questions that was now in your paper in June, a, um, paper that, that was written now in June, that a question there at the top reads, the assassin, assassination sorry, of Chris Harney was viewed as the turning point in the political history of South Africa. Do you agree with this statement? Sub, uh, Subsonate your answer by referring to re uh, relevant sorry, historical evidence. Now, what does this say, guys? You have to take a stance on this view, on this, on this statement. Do you agree? Do you not agree? So how do you start the essay? You start by saying you agree or you, <coughs> sorry, disagree. So was his death the turning point in the whole negotiation process? Yes or no? And if I can just say something about taking a stance, remember to take one, please. Uh, firstly, because many learners forget to take a stance, they just start writing the essay. Um, the, 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 the stance that you take will most form part of your introduction. And um, uh, yeah, I would say my advice, do not actually agree with the statement because if you agree that this was the turning point, Hani was killed in 1993, in April 1993 if I'm right, and if you agree, it means you can only start writing your essay at 1993, which limits you because now so many things happened before that. You know, uh, most of the things happened before that. So you are limiting yourself if you say you agree with the statement, right? Um, but if you agree, you will start after introduction with the assassination of Arnie. What was the local and international reaction to Arnie's death? Because it was such a, uh, he was such a key figure, Arnie. I would say since the death of Steve Beaker, maybe 1977, no person's death up until that stage was 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 so was so um, widely um, covered by the media and what. Um, you must remember, even if Oliver Tambu then passed away, I think in the same year, uh, this was different. Why? Because he was murdered. He was murdered, right? Response of the anti-apartheid organizations to Arnie's death, how did they respond? Then, do not forget, whenever you write about Chris Arnie, do not forget to bring in the role that Nelson Mandela played, because um, it was, it, this was critical uh, uh, to, to, to say that he had to go and calm the nation. The role of Ruth Meyer and Ramaphosa, like I just said to you, I believe it was them that came together and said, now we should set a date for elections. And then the record of understanding, the date for the 1994 election is, uh, is set, and then the actual elections that take uh, place. And just read there with me of your conclusion. Candidates should tie up the argument based on their point of view. So what you say in the introduction, you bring in again at the conclusion, right? If you disagree, now, now it makes your, 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 your essay writing easier because now there are so much more things that you can cover. You can start with the process of ne negotiations at Pretoria minute, Grote Skier minute. Kudesa 1, Kudesa 2. Record of understanding again. Increased violence. You can mention the violence that took place in the townships. You can mention the storming of the World Trade Center, the far right-wing organizations, their reaction towards negotiations. Um, and then the setting of the election date. Guys, if I can just go back to that third last bullet. Something of the World Trade Center. You have to just look at how many people were there between 1990 and 94 that tried to disrupt negotiations. We had the far right. We had the IFP. Um, it was very challenging with all the people that tried to make it difficult the whole time. And I say again with conclusion, 
candidates should type their argument based again on their point of view. What did you say in the beginning? You disagree. You bring it in again in your conclusion. Guys, um, yeah, this, this essay um, is, 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 is really, they, they, they are only two ways I believe that they could ask it. So, so you basically have to go and, go and learn the stuff. Why? Because you take a statement and then you justify your statement by giving actual facts, examples of what happened. So you, you have to go and study for essay. You cannot just go and write and um, expect them to. You have to go and study because you need actual facts. Like I say, said to you, mention some of the dates. For example, mention the date of Mandela's release or the clerk's speech where he announced Mandela's release. Mention maybe the date of, of Arnie's death. Mention the elections. I mean, where, 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 what is it, more than 20 million people actually participated in this first democratic election. If I'm, if I'm right, I believe the ANC got 62% of the votes. The National Party got almost 20% of the votes. The IFP got about 10%. The other parties did not get a lot of the votes. So those, those were our three key parties. You can, you can mention some of the things that went on with the elections where they said um, the votes in Natal KwaZulu Natal was, 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 was cheated on, you know, by the IFP. Um, th that there was voting station that did not have enough voting papers to, to actually vote on. You know, uh, the um, Butelezi's last minute decision to join the elections, or even Phil Yoon's last minute decision. Yeah, so, um, yeah, I hope, I hope this has been helpful. Um, really not a difficult essay. Um, I believe most learners will definitely, because you have to answer at least one essay. And I believe most learners are answering this, this essay. Right, but uh, I thank you a lot, and, uh, and I, hope, I hope really it has been helpful.